Hello, my name is Virla Haverals and I work for the University of Antwerp, Belgium. This ILSA project video will give an overview of the concepts and challenges of interlingual respeaking. We continue to build on what you have learned in the previous modules, that is, the modules on subtitling, on simultaneous interpreting and on intralingual respeaking. So let's start by comparing intralingual respeaking with interlingual respeaking. Intralingual respeaking is a technique for live subtitling, whereby the respeaker listens to live spoken input and simultaneously repeats it in the language of the speaker to a speech recognition software that turns the respoken text into written subtitles or written text. Interlingual respeaking is a technique for live subtitling whereby the respeaker listens to live spoken input and simultaneously translates it into another language while using the speech recognition software. So, in interlingual respeaking, you work from one language into another, live, much like a simultaneous interpreter does. Now that we know what interlingual respeaking is, the question is, what are the main challenges of interlingual respeaking? The challenges that we will go over in this video lecture are multitasking, dictation, speed, working with software and cultural aspects. The first challenge is multitasking. Not only do you have to listen carefully to the audio, but you must also understand the speaker which is the same as in intralingual respeaking. In addition, you have to translate what you have just heard live and at the same time continue to listen to the audio. So, unlike intralingual respeaking, in interlingual respeaking there is an additional process happening inside your head, which is comparable to simultaneous interpreting, as you listen and speak at the same time using two languages. Additionally, when the text appears on your computer, you need to monitor the on-screen output and you might have to do some editing yourself, if you're working alone. The second challenge is dictating the translation. Clear dictation might be more difficult in the case of interlingual respeaking, because of the mental capacity required for the translation process. In other words, your focus could shift from dictating clearly to live translation. You may dictate slower because you are processing the translation in your head while you are respeaking the previous sentence. The language transfer process in interlingual respeaking requires so-called buffering or storing of content. In addition, a respeaker must create sentences that are well structured from the start. Due to the translation process, which can involve languages that are syntactically different, a respeaker cannot always just start to respeak the sentence they hear, because the word order in the two languages may be different. A respeaker needs to fully understand where the original speaker is heading and understand that concepts they are discussing, as well as any implicit cultural references or connotations. All of this is very similar to simultaneous interpreting. A respeaker needs to take a little bit more distance from the source text than in interlingual respeaking. In other words, a respeaker has to learn to buffer more to store the audio input in their memory so they can respeak it a little later, while continuing to listen to the next sentence. The third challenge is dealing with the speed at which all tasks in the interlingual respeaking process occur. High speech rates can cause a respeaker to omit information to keep up with the source text. If a respeaker finds they cannot keep up with the text, it is important to try to summarize the respoken output by maintaining the main ideas of the text and omitting repetitions and filler words. Speed can also impact the quality of the live translation being produced. 
at some points, interlingual speakers may struggle to come up with the most correct or appropriate live translation. The most accurate translation or the most correct word in the target language may not be the one the speaker thinks of first. An example is faux amis or false friends. Since you are translating live, you might stay too close to what you heard, translate it too literally and thus make real content mistakes. Challenge number four is related to the software and devices that we speaker have to use. We speakers should be confident working with the speech recognition software and understand the basic mechanics of how it works. Having technical know-how will allow we speakers to swiftly deal with technical issues. There are many things that we speakers can do to avoid misrecognition errors when we speaking. Things like training their voice profile, adding words to the speech recognition software's dictionary, and creating custom comments will help to optimize the voice profile and allow for fewer recognition errors. Language-based problems can also occur, for example, homophones, which can result in mixed recognitions. Finally, Challenge 5 is dealing with cultural aspects, as cultural aspects of the source text that might get lost in translation. We speakers must ensure they have a good understanding of cultural expressions, idiomatic phrases and sayings in the source and target languages. An example can be seen here with the phrase practice makes perfect in English, Spanish and German. And what about humor? Jokes might also get lost in translation, especially when we're speaking live, since the re-speaker doesn't have the time to re-speak everything. Even if the re-speaker understands the joke, can they find a humorous alternative translation in such a short space of time? What if it is a pun and its keywords are repeated later on in the program? If you're translating from English, for example, the speaker may be referring to measures or figures in a different metric system. Would you be able to interpret and reformulate those into the right amount in your own language in real time? These challenges are, again, similar to those encountered by simultaneous interpreters. You will have understood that interlingual re-speaking presents quite a few challenges. However, practice shows that it can be done and that you can learn how. So this is what we're going to do together in this module.